It's time for Garage Band Weekly, episode 116, here on Studio Live today. Let's do it. Garage Band, Garage Band Weekly, Garage Band, Garage Band Weekly, episode 116, here on Studio Live today. Yes, it is that time of the week where we talk about all Garage Band all the time here on the show. Welcome aboard. I hope you're having or had a good weekend. It is Monday morning here in Australia. It is Sunday afternoon or evening, depending where you are in the rest of the world. And if you're here live, say g'day. If you're here live, you can also uh, do the following thing. If you have any questions, we have plenty of time here for Q&A. Always happy to answer your Garage Band related or Garage Band adjacent questions. And if you are a Garage Band user, or as we say, Garage Band curious, if you haven't quite got into Garage Band, but you're just considering it, this show is brought to you by my Garage Band Beginner's Guide. The easiest way to get there is just to go to studiolivetoday.com slash garage band, and you can check out my Garage Band iOS FAQ, including right at the top here, just $10, you can grab my Garage Band Beginner's Guide. I had a couple of people buy it this week and said, hey, it was really useful. It's five hours of curated content and it just helps get you up and running. There is, of course, a bunch of free resources on the FAQ there as well to get you started with GarageBand on your iPhone or your iPad. We've got a lot of stuff to get into, so why don't we crack on in uh, to our news and notes for the week. So the big news, the big thing that's coming soon to a YouTube near you <laughs> is uh, we've got a new event. We've got a new Apple event and every time we get a new apple event it means new hardware and potentially new software and new gear and maybe new updates to uh to ios and to mac os we don't really know but we can speculate it's it's fun to speculate sometimes so uh here is the event here there's a link down in the description if you're watching this one uh, on the youtubes or the facebooks or wherever it is happening on uh now for me it is 5 a.m on so it's always weird timing but 5 a.m on the 7th uh, 9th of march it'll be at uh, 10 a.m pacific 1 p.m eastern on the 8th of march if you are in the u.s and you'll have to convert it to your time zone but what are we expecting well uh, when whenever we have stuff like this i go to uh, a couple of sources and one that i like is uh, this one here mac rumors uh, there's a video there that you can watch for the apple event here but uh, they go through most of the big things that have been suggested so number one is something I'm actually excited about because the iPhone SE looks like it's going to get a 2022 upgrade, which means that it's not going to change much of any of the outside. It's going to be like the, the iPhone 8 design that we've had for a long time in a 4.7 inch screen, meaning the home button, meaning the big bezels. I actually kind of like that. And I've, I've joked about the fact that I've been tempted to trade in my iPhone 12 Pro and move into the iPhone SE 2. Now, if an iPhone SE 3 comes out that has the smaller screen but still has enough capacity for me and has a home button... I'm, I'm pretty convinced. Like I may actually pick this up uh, as either a second phone or to simply replace this. Because as you can see here, uh, the detail, we can't see it because it's very small there, but the details there say it's going to have the same chip in it as the iPhone 13. So you're going to pay a lot less. You're going to get the old form factor, a smaller screen, less chunky, less of this like industrial design we have now, more old school, but with the guts of the new school. And I know many people, including my wife, that use the iPhone SE 2 and think it's really, really good. And uh, it would be good to see this. The other rumors we have, new iPad Air. So the iPad Air fourth generation was the first iPad, non-pro iPad to have USB-C. And the iPad Air fifth generation, as it may be, uh, is rumored to come out. And it's going to basically be just an extended version of that. They're continuing with that pro design with the sort of rounded corners and the, the straight edges that we have there. It'll continue to be USB-C. It'll probably still have that touch ID on the top like the old one did, but it'll just have new guts. Again, it'll get updated to that A15 chip. So that could be good for GarageBand creators because the the base level iPad's actually really good for GarageBand. The iPad Pro is absolute overkill. I'm happy to say even my 2020 iPad Pro, two generations old now, is absolute overkill for using GarageBand on iOS, whereas the iPad Air fourth gen is like that beautiful happy medium. So this thing is going to be a great option for someone you don't want to break the bank and buy an iPad Pro, but you want a little bit more power than the standard iPad. So that's, uh, that's on the agenda. And for our Mac users, well, Mac Mini. Are we going to see new Mac Minis with the new M1 Pro or M1 Max guts? Uh, possibly. Are we going to see the new M2? 
possibly. We'll talk about that in just a moment because, uh, yeah, there's speculation galore around the Mac Mini and the MacBook Pro. You can see there where they're talking about the M2 MacBook Pro. Now, keep in mind that uh, when we're talking about this sort of stuff, we'll just jump over here. The, the new chip, so the M2 chip, let's just take a little step back. So as you may recall, over a year ago, Apple announced M1 and they released Macs like the one that I have down here. A bit like this, they, they announced Macs that were very low priced, but had uh, this integrated chip, this system on a chip, silicon architecture. And uh, people like me, who'd never owned a Mac, jumped on board because we thought it was pretty cool. Because for me, it was only a thousand bucks and I could get a Mac and I'd never used a Mac before. So I that was my first Mac that I ever purchased. Then they, uh, they brought out the M1 Pro and M1 Max that was announced last year. And that took it up a notch. And the thing is, people are thinking, well, M2 is going to take it up another notch. Here's the thing. M2 is not going to be better than M1 Pro and M1 Max necessarily. That's The way Apple do things is a bit weird there. They kind of have their Pro stuff, and then they'll probably go back and reset. So M2 will be better than M1, but it probably won't be. It might be about on par with M1 Pro, and it might not even be as good as M1 Max. So you just got to look at the specs and keep in mind that that's the way it's going to be. So if you think, wow, there's going to be these new budget M2 machines, and I, own, I just bought a Mac Pro with uh, the MacBook Pro with the M1 Max or the M1 Pro, yeah, don't lose any sleep over it because you're still going to have an ma um, amazing machine. Uh, Thomas Christ says, I'll probably throw a curveball and call it the N chip. Yeah, so <laughs> how cool would that be? They go from M1 and then it's just N1 and then O1 and then P1 and then Q1, and they're going to keep going. Maybe, maybe not. So there's a bunch of other stuff that uh, is sort of rumoured, like if, if we jump back over to, to uh, here, the, there's, you know, new new phone cases and colours and colours. Uh, I'm not that fussed about that. Uh, iPad uh, OS and iOS 15.4 and Mac OS Monterey. So, uh, yeah, we're, there's likely going to be uh, some more announcements and some more information about new versions of Mac OS and iOS that we may be getting in the future. Uh, now, if you want to watch the event you can watch it live uh, just go to the links down in the description and uh, you can watch along and see what's announced i'll be doing a show and i even believe jade star's doing a show as well so if you want um the 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 versions without all the wafty kind of superlatives without everything being stunning and magnificent and whatever other superlatives they throw out there and just the facts man uh then uh, yeah you can join me after that so uh i'm about three hours after the show about two hours after it finishes i'll be uh, doing a, a summary version, a what you need to know to get going. But uh, let me know if you're excited about this stuff. Look, I know it's just, you know what, feels like going through the motions now. It's like, okay, now it's the spring event and now it's the fall event and uh, whatever. Anyway, um, new stuff. Yeah, and you know what the good thing is? New stuff always brings down the price of old stuff anyway. So if like me, you're never latest generation, you're always a generation or two behind this actually helps you out as well because the refurb market is impacted by this stuff. Uh, we'll jump into our next item, but we'll first say g'day to everyone who's here. Hello to Barry Glenn. Hello, Joe Glenn. Hello, Thomas Christ. G'day to Peter. Hello, Papa Tom Carrera. It's his uh, doc. Doctor's Orders is here with us. Uh, hello to you. Uh, I saw a Tremor Bear is here. Hello to Jade Star. Hello to Jerry Gomes. I uh, hope everyone is ticking along and doing well. Another underwhelming event. You reckon that's going to be the thing? See, I don't know. I don't even know what I, I don't even know what good is now. I don't know what I would actually say is an incredibly stunning uh, thing. Incredibly stunning would be that they decide that they're going to run Windows. Like, come on, give us a real left field thing. Give us, give us like, oh, we're going back to actually Intel and we're going to be running Windows now on our Macs. We've, we've decided Mac OS is no good and we're back on Windows. All right, uh, other news in the last week. Uh, now we're, going to, we're going to cover this in our plugin of the week as well, uh, real quickly, because I've already done videos on these. And that is that we've got some new stuff here from Baby Audio, excuse me. Sneezing. Sneezing for the win. Uh, we've got some new plugins from Baby Audio. We've got this one, the Magic Switch, which is an AUV3 chorus plugin, a one dial plugin that just gives you a nice lush chorus sound. We'll be playing with that a little bit later in the show. And we also have this one, the Magic Dice from Baby Audio, which is an echo reverb plugin. We're going to be looking at both of these in the, uh, the plugins of the week. But if you want to check them out, I've got links to the videos that I've made about these down in the description. So you can check those out. It's pretty exciting stuff. Um, I saw um, <clears throat> when uh, when Patrick first talked about Baby Audio's um, I Love New York, I think that's the name of it, uh, like a, a brick wall limiter, I think it is, or a compressor. 
it, it looked really cool, like cool interface, cool plugin, sounded great, but it was Mac only. And in fact, the uh, the folks at Baby Audio reached out to me just after they started releasing plugins, like a couple of months back, and said, um, "Wow, we've we've got all these cool plugins. You know, happy to give you trial versions if you want to check them out on your channel." And at that time, I said, "Look, I'm." Pretty focused on iOS at the moment, but I'm getting more into Mac OS. So, you know, get, I'll, I'll get in touch again. And then, uh, yeah, I get a message from them uh, recently saying, guess what? We've started releasing plugins for iOS. Here's the first two. And they were both free and they're both cool. So this is a good indication that perhaps we'll, uh, we'll get uh, some more baby audio plugins in the future because these are kind of like a little taster this is it reminds me of what nembrini audio did when they came into the ios world they threw crunk and a bunch of these free analog effects at us and we all went wow these are amazing and then they continued to release paid apps down the track which i don't mind because you get an idea for how the interface works how the infrastructure works you know that they make quality stuff and then when they ask you to pay for it then you go hey actually it's cool i know this company they make good stuff and i trust them there you go. Windows 11 is coming around too. Yeah, probably. <laughs> probably uh, we'll do that. Apple would uh, probably bribe Microsoft to have their own fork of Windows if they were going to Windows. Yeah, there'd be some sort of weirdness going on there, but I I highly doubt that. Um, Windows, yeah, see, this is, what I, this is how little I know. Windows 11 came out six months ago. I'm so off the ball. Uh, who would have thought, who would have thunk it that I would drink the Kool-Aid so heavily that I'm literally drunk on the Kool-Aid now? <laughs> That's the way we go. All righty. Uh, so that is the news and notes for the week. Uh, we do have a feature topic, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to shuffle the order around a bit because we're going to close with the feature topic. We've got some mixing of some vocals in GarageBand iOS to do for the track that Tremor Bear has kindly allowed me to sing some vocals and, and complete. And it's come along okay. I need your opinion. I need your feedback and I need your input because what I'm probably going to do is I've got my song in Logic that's kind of on hold. That was my February song that didn't quite get finished. And this is my March project. But we're here on the 7th of March and I've almost concluded like the, the vocals. And, and I think we can kind of just mix this, not, not overthink it, but mix it, get it done and push it out. So uh, I'll lead your opinion and the opinion of, of course, the, the artist Tremor Bear, because he's the one who created the song and he can let me if he's happy with it and we can finish it and mix it and master it and then get that done. And then we'll circle back around to Logic, I promise, because I know some folks were like, hey, dude, what happened? You were like halfway through doing a Logic song and then you stopped. You know what? Sometimes life gets in the way and other times you just, you get something else that takes your attention away. And as long as you keep in creating, like the idea was here, here's the, here's the January project, here's the February, here's the March. If we flip March and February around, no harm, no foul. Again, it's just sometimes you're not in the right creative or mental space to do a thing. And as long as you do another thing, I call it positive procrastination. So, so I'm positively procrastinating doing my February Logic song by doing this song, by, by just jumping quickly back into my comfort zone, doing this song in GarageBand iOS. So we'll be doing that later in the show. But uh, let's jump onto our rant of the week. And I want your opinion on this because I've talked about it before, but I'm part of a heap of different Facebook groups. I'm now getting into Discord. I'm trying to learn what Discord is about. My 12-year-old daughter is helping me learn what Discord is and how it works. So I'm getting into Discord now. And I hear again and again a lot of folks talking about success as being a win-lose, uh, one-shot thing. And I'm going to put it out here that I'm going to title this rant, Eminem was wrong. Because you don't only get one shot, you get multiple shots. So I'd rather go with the Wayne Gretzky sort of motto, which is you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. When in that eight mile song or whatever, you're going to lose yourself. It's like, yeah, you only get one shot, one chance to do it. It's absolute BS because most artists and most successful people don't just take one shot and either fail or win and win on their first attempt. The vast majority of musicians, the vast majority of people in any walk of life, anything that you can define success around, have tried and tried and tried. They've worked, they've grown, they've developed, and eventually they've been able to harness or take an opportunity. The idea that there is only one opportunity, it's kind of like the relationship thing. And I've talked about this before, and people think I'm going to get in trouble with my wife, but she agrees with me. It's like the whole, there is only one person in the whole world for, for every person is also BS because it's not the case. It's like there's a whole bunch of opportunities and it's all around, you know, luck, 
timing, convenience, right place at right time, all those same things that will help you find the right relationship will also find your success. So that's sort of point one. Thing one about this is there's not only one shot, you've got multiple shots. So a lot of people in these forums and, and yeah, garage band people are actually slightly better at this, to be honest. So I'm talking to you folks that are watching this show because I think you have this understanding that a lot of us are just kind of working on things and you're using garage band because you're starting out and you're getting, getting things happening. But even if you're not like... It, it's very toxic to say you've only got one shot. And if you, I don't know we say around this, you know, we all rise together. Let's fail harder. You know, that failure is actually good. What, what, what is not good is if you keep failing and you're not learning from that and you're not growing, you're not doing things differently. It's like that misattributed Einstein quote that, you know, doing the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Well, even though he didn't actually say that, it's still pretty true because you do need to change things up. And that's why the sharing your music in these sort of communities and these groups is so good because you learn from the watching shows like Mike's Fix My Mix show. Every time I'm on that and even when I'm not and I'm watching others, I learn something because they're listening to a mix, they're providing some critique and then they're giving some feedback. And even on uh, YML, on my Your Music Live show, we do a little bit of that as well. So that's sort of point one. The second point I wanted to talk about is that a lot of people forget that you personally get to define your own personal view of success. And I put this out on the Create, Record, Release group and got some some good reactions and interactions from folks that were like, yeah, I don't really think about that. But sometimes we measure our success based on others. And especially in the social media world where everything's vanity metrics and followers and likes and subscribers and all that BS, a lot of the time we forget that we actually get to define what success is. So I consider myself successful. If I looked at it, uh, Rick Beato, who's got over a million subscribers and getting you know tens and hundreds of thousands of views on each video, am I successful compared to Rick? No, but am I successful by my own measure of success, which is, hey, I wonder if I can create a community and create a job for myself that means that this is how I pay the bills and keep the lights on by doing this job, by creating music and by sharing music education. Yes. So uh, is that successful for me? Yes. And I think a lot of people think that. They think that success in music and recording is record deal, is other people that wear suits and that don't really understand thinking that their stuff is good and is millions of dollars and, you know, sitting in the club with the bottle service and all the ladies dancing around you. Like, that's the measure of success. And if that's what you personally want to go for, more power to you. But for the vast majority of people, that's not what they even want. They think they want it because that's what they see. That's what's portrayed on TV and social media and all this sort of stuff. But is that what they really want? So that's all I'm going to challenge you on this week. And that's what my rant here is all about, is to stop and take a think, take, take stock and work out what it is that you're actually trying to achieve. What does success look like for you? And if you are already there, then great. For some people, success is simply creating, recording, and releasing a song. That's why my whole mantra has been create, record, release. Because I think that for the vast majority of us, just getting to that stage where you've finished a project, that feeling of accomplishment, that to me is the ultimate success, that you're actually getting something done. And you know what? For others, it's not even that. Just just playing with a toy, just playing and noodling and checking out new plugins. If that's what you want to do and you're, you feel successful or that you get to spend two hours a week or a day or a month or whatever, just playing around with music, then I think you're winning. So uh, consider that, consider that uh, this week. Uh, all right, let's, uh, let's continue on. Uh, yes, peace and contentment is success for me. There you go. Peace and contentment. Um, and now with the internet, all it takes is one viral video or song. Yeah, it does. And that, that's, all, that's really good and a really valid point, Tom. And it's also really dangerous too, because you know, we won't get into the deep sort of deep seated discussion around people that are over successful too soon and how that changes things. We've all seen the stories of the athletes that get the multi-million dollar contracts, go and buy the Lambo and the house and all the staff and get all the entourage. And then three years later, they're broke. So it's kind of the same thing. I've seen a lot of people with viral videos, they get too successful too quickly, and then they think that the gravy train is just going to never end, and they don't plan or manage things. So yeah, success is not procrastinating. Am I procrastinating now? Yeah, I'm procrastinating because I want to get onto, uh, <laughs> I want to get onto the next section. Uh, hello, Clayton Von Kluge, by the way. Hello, Transforming Gravity. Hello, Bitterman. Hello, Clear Grey Sky. Hello to anyone. Uh, Mark Bro. anyone else I haven't said day to. Let's move on. 
Farmers Union iced coffee, I do uh, treat myself to every now and then. Um, let's move on to our plug-in or app of the week, because I uh, I alluded to it before by telling you it was this. Uh, but we're going to have a quick look at um, these plugins. So go ahead and download them. They're free, and I think you'll dig them. We're using them. Well, I've already started using both of these plugins here on this track that we're going to be looking at in a little while. But just to give you a very quick overview here, there's two different plugins. Uh, we'll use them on these drums because they actually both work kind of well on drums. So uh, this drum track, this Kyle drummer track here that we have on this uh, Tremor Bear song sounds like this. <coughs> it's just a nice sort of kick snare with a clap kind of pattern. So if we come into our... <coughs> Excuse me. So if we come into our plugins and EQ... You can see I've already got the magic switch on here. So we'll just remove it for now and we'll play around with a couple of these. So without anything on here at the moment, this is the sound. Just turn it up a wee bit. So it's pretty cool. But here's the thing. Uh, we can add these plugins. Now, remember, when you're adding a plugin, where you add it is important. This case, I've only got the compressor and the visual EQ, so it doesn't really matter. But let's tap the plus button there. We'll go audio unit extension. Well, scroll on down. And here you go, we've got Magic Dice and Magic Switch. Let's take a look at Magic Dice first. So this one's been a bit controversial because a lot of folks have said, I really don't want to use this because what if I get the perfect sounding reverb and then I can never reproduce it? Because here's the thing, you hit the dice here and it just creates a random sound. So each time you press it, let's hit the play button. It's on here, it's mixed in at sort of half. We'll mix it, we'll mix it 100% just so that we can really hear the effect. Let's take a listen. Whoa. So that's a pretty epic sort of sound. Let's just sort of bring the mix down a little bit here. Wow, it's like a, sounds like a Rage Against the Machine kind of machine gunny sort of delay. So it's actually pretty cool. With just a little bit added to it, it's kind of cool. But here's the thing, every time we hit this dice, we get something new. So we hit the dice and now, We're getting this crazy, like, in a tin can kind of vibe. We hit it again, we get another one. That's kind of cool. So I might go with something like that on this one. Now, I got a question during the week, and I'm going to answer it live here. I haven't checked it yet. Can you save in your presets? So let's just say that I really like this sound. So I'd call this, like, a fast slap backy reverb. So if we go to presets, can we actually save this in? Uh, let's do this. Let's call it fast. Slappy. <laughs> that was my nickname in high school. Fast Slappy. Um, and yeah, so there you go. We can actually save that in. So does that mean we can reproduce it? If we, if we dice it up a bunch, and we don't want that, we want to actually go back to Fast Slappy. Can we do that? We can. There you go. So if you do find something that's like gold, you're just like, wow, this is the best effect ever. I want to be able to reproduce this, but I can't because it's random. Uh, yeah, throw it on your preset there and you'll be able to do it. So you can obviously use this on your guitars, your vocals, your bass, your whatever you like, your keys. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it's a cool, uh, cool sounding plugin. The other one that we have, if we take Magic Dice off, uh, it reminds me of Magic Bus. All right, we'll play Magic Bus. Uh, Magic Dice, we also have Magic Switch. Now, the reason these are all up my alley kind of plugins is that I don't really like to think. <laughs> it's funny, I, I sent my uh, reviews back to Baby Audio, and they're like, we, we kind of dug that you said that you like these because you don't like to think. <laughs> I'm like, wait, was that an insult or a compliment? I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, I think that the point is that sometimes you get bogged down in all the different uh, presets and all the different dials and switches and everything. And sometimes just being able to turn on a switch is pretty cool. So Magic Switch just creates the same kind of sound. It's this lush chorus sound that you get, and it's really just about how much you mix in. So uh, let's hit the play button uh, without it on. Worry about we'll, uh, we'll solo it again so we can just hear these drums. So there, there's the drums. And if we turn the magic switch on, love it. I love the graphics on this one. And hit play, we'll just dial this up in the mix and you'll hear what it does. Right? And it's kind of, it's almost this secret source that I'll probably like add to a bunch of different things. In fact, let's, uh, let's put these in tandem. If we put that up front and then we throw the dice behind it, <laughs> <laughs> throwing the dice like I'm playing craps. We'll put the dice behind it. And look, we'll go to our preset and we'll bring our fast slappy on with just a little bit of mix. Let's see, I reckon this will actually make this sound cool. 
Even less than that. Just a little hint of that. Yeah. So that's with them on. Let's turn them off. It just like thickens things up a bit, doesn't it? Bring it back to our mix. It's just an illusion. Stay close to home. Cool, yeah. I dig it anyway. I think it's I think it's awesome. Uh, so and, and they're free. So how do you argue with free? Yeah, don't. Uh, it's cool. Uh, we'll see if we got any comments, and then we'll uh, we'll jump on and look at some other thing. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It does, it does sound cool. Uh, but, 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 yes, yeah. It would be pretty unfortunate if it wasn't possible to save. Key takeaway: if you like it, save it. Ha <laughs> ha. Exactly. Spot on. Uh, since you can save user presets, I might change my mind about this one. Yeah. So I think if you if you just start using it and you get um, you get that randomness and it works out for you, then maybe you want to keep it there. The other thing that I found this works really well on is vocals. So the vocal track, the lead vocal track for this song is this one here, and it sounds like this. Close to all the confusion. And as you can see, I've got Magic Switch on there as well. Make uh, sense of it all let's turn and quickly it off. forget. So here what it's doing there is just adding. It's time to think of all the people who need help. You just get that slightly thicker kind of sound that you get with the chorus. And I probably don't even need that much, just a little bit like that. You call it truth, I call it opinion. Right? I like it. Uh, so, yeah, it, it works well on a bunch of different stuff. And yeah, it's just sometimes just a little bit of something. A little bit of something. Yeah, it's a bit like butter. Exactly. It's like just a little bit of creaminess on top. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, uh, let's uh, let's move on. Don't turn that volume up too loud. Yeah, I'm coming through a bit loud. I'm coming through a bit clippy. Uh, so that's our plugins of the week: the magic switch and the magic dice. Um, we'll do our tip of the week, and then we will jump into mixing these vocals uh, in the last sort of half an hour of the show. So I'm going to make the tip of the week super simple this week, and that is: please back up your projects. Regardless of what you're using, if it's GarageBand iOS or GarageBand Mac or GarageBand on your iPod Touch, wherever it is, please back up your projects. I've had another couple of emails in the last week from folks who said, yes, I've worked hard for years and years and years, thought my stuff was saved, and then I did an iOS update and everything just went away. And unfortunately, this happens often and, you know, it's a good learning experience because you only usually have something catastrophic like that happen once before you realize, hey, I better do something about this. But can I just please, please ask everyone to uh, to back up your stuff? Um, there's a couple of ways to do it. The easiest way if you're a GarageBand iOS user is to make sure that you always save your stuff on iCloud Drive. If you're a GarageBand Mac user, I suggest you do the same. So instead of saving to a location that's local on your hard drive, just when you, when you go to save your project, just select your iCloud, your iCloud Drive. Now, yes, you'll run out of storage very quickly. And yes, you'll probably need to consider up grading so i've upgraded i pay actually i've got the apple one now but before that i was spending about 15 dollars australian per month to get two gigabytes of two gigabytes terabytes how much lots two terabytes of storage does that sound right <laughs> sometimes i forget like because i've come from a days of megabytes and into gigabytes and into terabytes yeah two terabytes of storage you can get 200 gigabytes you can get different levels and it will cost you different amounts so that's the easiest thing to do so i know for instance that i'm here in my icloud drive and this track that i'm working on for bear at the moment in the bear folder these are all updated so every time i come in here like let's just say we're gonna we're gonna duplicate this to get version five see that little cloud icon it's going to sit here and it's going to upload that directly to the cloud right now and then if this ipad goes for a swim later today which hopefully it doesn't i know that i can just jump onto my mac i can jump onto my iphone i can go to any device and it's backed up there it's done it's backed up that 216 megabytes have been uploaded into icloud and they're safe they're there forever what if you don't have iCloud Drive or you don't want to pay for it? Uh, whether you're on Mac or on uh, iOS, the, the method here is the same. You just want to zip up your project. So zipping up projects is pretty simple. If we just go here, so I want to zip up this bare project, we'll go back to that folder. We'll uh, tap and hold on this one. And then we want to select the compress option. The other way you can do it is to tap select, select that one, hit the more button and compress, but it's kind of easier to just do this. And look, you can do, if I wanted to back up all of these, let's say I wanted all versions of these, all four versions that we've worked on so far, uh, those four, then we can just select them all there, go more 
and go compressed. And what this creates is a zip file. It archives them up, it creates a zip file. Now that in itself isn't gonna back it up anywhere else. It'll back it up to your iCloud Drive, but then what you can do is you can upload that zip file to your Dropbox, your Google Drive. You can use a USB drive or a, or a flash drive and copy it somewhere else. You can use what I use, which is AudioShare's Wi-Fi transfer to transfer it over to a Mac or a PC or an Android device or whatever you like. But Please just uh, heed the warning that I have from other folks and what's happened to them and don't let your stuff go. And here's the thing, even if it does, even if you don't back up and your stuff does go away, keep in mind that you've still got the benefit, you've still got the learning from creating all of that. So it might feel really bad in the moment, but you can recover in that you can create new stuff. There's always new ideas. If you've been able to do that, if you've been able to create music, you're going to be able to create more music. So please, please, if you do nothing else this week with your GarageBand projects, please go and back up. Please. <laughs> That's all I have to say about that because I'm really, really tired of, uh, of having those emails. And uh, people say, is there anything that I can do? And the answer is usually no. And it's rare, like most of the time, it shouldn't touch it. It shouldn't touch your iCloud drive. It shouldn't touch the files saved on your device just by updating. But we all know that iOS updates and Mac OS updates can do some funky things. I don't, I don't disbelieve anything anymore. People say, it did this. And I'm like, it shouldn't do that. And they're like, yeah, it did. Um, and then you do. So please, please do that. We've got two bears in the chat, do we? We've got Ice Bear. Hello, Ice Bear. Do you know what dubstep is? Vaguely. It's a type of dance music that I don't understand. Yes, USB drives, exactly. USB drives, whatever you can do. Whatever you can, wherever you can store it. It really doesn't matter. The details don't matter. What matters is that you actually do store it somewhere. Okay, enough said. Let's uh, let's get in. Just before we do that, uh, a reminder, if you're just joining us here live, that uh, this show here today is brought to you uh, by my Garage Band FAQ. If you jump over to studiolivetoday.com slash garage band, that little link there, you're going to come in here. Uh, you're going to be able to check this one out. If you want to kickstart your Garage Band learning, you can check out the Garage Band Beginner's Guide, which is this option up here. It'll take you straight over here where for just 10 of your American dollars, you can actually uh, purchase this guide. So you can purchase, oh look, I've, I've logged in, I've already, <laughs> I've already signed in here. Uh, but yes, you can purchase the guide here, which is our GarageBand Beginners Guide. They've, they've changed up this front page a little bit <laughs> since last time I looked here. So you can purchase the GarageBand Beginners Guide. But if you don't have $10 to invest and you want to go and find it yourself, just come on down here because we've got a bunch of playlists. We've got our What is GarageBand playlist, which is an overview of the app. We've got how to start a song, we've got how to set up a song with all your project setups. GarageBand Quick Jams, if you don't have a lot of time, they're little two to five minutes tutorials that cover everything about GarageBand and my GarageBand iOS Essentials. So this is a good place to start, the Essentials playlist. This just goes through how to set up, uh, how to, uh, the basics of mixing, how to master, some of the uh, connection things, connecting up, using your touch guitar, using audio versus virtual instruments, vocal recording setups. There's a bunch of stuff in here and uh, you will be set for days. And even the fact that you cannot use GarageBand on Android, uh, I know, or Windows, I'm sorry. It's not my decision. Uh, I would let you if you could, but uh, for some reason, Apple have decided that they only want to allow their hardware to play with their software. It's just a thing. It's just a thing in a place. All right. <clears throat> It is time. And there you go. Thank you, Thomas Christ. Yes, you can also go through studiolivetoday.com slash courses. Because the course is a course. Of course. Of course. All right. Uh, let's jump on in and take a look at our feature topic. We are going to be mixing some vocals. And I've actually done most of the mixing. <laughs> so it could be a quick segment. But I'm going to walk you through and show you what I've done, some of the choices, some of the decisions, and get you to help me decide what we do from here. So uh, you might recall that, let's just take a, a step back. I'm working on this project. The instrumental stuff is not mine. It has been donated by the wonderful Tremor Bear. And when I say donated, I'm doing these vocals and then I'm handing it back. You heard it here, folks. Uh, no, no problems with this. This is Tremor Bear's songs. I offered to and volunteered to provide vocals. Once it's complete, I'm handing back the mix. I'm handing back the master. Tremor Bear can do with it what they wish. Uh, so they provided this. They created some cool drum tracks here that we've mixed in here. We've got some percussion and we've got... Uh, I actually love the way the drums were done. Let's let's solo these up and we'll take a look sort of bit by bit. So uh, last week we sort of mixed in and we got the percussion sounding good in its own space. 
Yeah, come on everybody. So all I've done with this during the week is I've done a little bit of panning job. So there's these cool pots and pans here, for instance, that do this little bit down here. And I've just panned these over a little bit to the right because they were sitting in the middle. But now when you listen in the stereo space, you'll hear them on the right. Because I wanted it to like be like a ride cymbal and just have that little stereo width. Very cool. I think I turned this up a bit, so we're just bringing that down a little bit. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Bear actually then did a very cool bass. Now, when uh, when Bear first gave me this track, he said, oh, I don't like the bass. I don't think it's good because you know, it's, it's, uh, it's just using a virtual bass. I actually love this bass. And I think when you hear it sort of tie in with the drums here, it works beautifully with this retro uh, picked bass sound. Right? Very sort of retro new wave kind of style. So that's our rhythm section going on there. Bear added a couple of very, very cool guitars, which I've grabbed here and I've panned right and left on these ones. So we've got the right guitar and the left guitar there. And that is the real engine room driver of this track. So let's take a listen to these guitars. Now there's a little visual bug in here that I hadn't seen before, and let me know if you've if you've experienced the same sort of thing. But if you take a look at this track, this is panned to the right, and what Garage Band should do is represent this on the right hand side. So see how this one's panned to the left, and you'll see it poking out more on the left than the right. It's the same over here. So if we play this, take a listen. So this is definitely panned to the right. Like well, I'll have to unsolo a bunch of stuff. Where's your Where's your bulk unsolo, Garage Band? Oh. So uh, the, here is our guitar. You can hear it from the right. Just doesn't show it. So there's our nice guitars. We then have this guitar that comes in here and does our chorus. It does our little stabs. This one here. which is sounding very cool as well. Uh, all I've done with this one, I don't think I've done any processing on that as yet. Plugins and EQs. Uh, yes, I have thrown wider on it. So I've thrown wider on here just to give it a bit of width because I was finding that it was sitting a little bit too, too much down the middle. So if we listen to it here, I've thrown wider on. In fact, that might be a bit too wide. Let's just narrow it up a bit. I reckon about 25% wide. Yeah, there. Very cool. So that was what uh, what Bear provided me. And he said, yep, can, you can go away and uh, create some vocals. So that's what we did. And last week, if you missed last week's show, it's linked down in the description. You can uh, take a listen to when we recorded these. Now, all I've done since is tidied up these end vocals because you might have recalled it all got a bit messy towards the end. And the end of this song is my absolute favorite thing. So it does need to be a bit messy, but I wanted to actually tighten up the harmony vocals. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to go through and take a look and a listen at these vocals. So Let's take a listen, as we did before, to the lead vocal, sounding like this. Let's drink a toast to all the confusion. So what I have on this is I've actually got it fairly highly compressed. Because it's a rock song, I've got quite a lot of compression on here. I've got like nearly 9 to 1 ratio. got a pretty fast attack on that. And uh, I've got the gain and the mix in there at 100%. So there's a bit of compression on there. I've got the tape delay and the stereo delay. So both of these came from, uh, what was it? Was the Radio Ready, I think? <laughs> One of the presets we used. I'm using this magic switch on here. And last week, we just gave a little dip here around those mids, and we gave a little bit of sparkle at the top end. So that was the, the mix that we went with. Again, you provide me some feedback. If you're hearing it and saying uh, this should sound more like this, then go ahead and uh, let me know, because that's the whole point of doing these sort of things. I'm not an expert in everything all the time. <laughs> Absolutely not. So uh, if you're hearing something and you're like, actually, Peter, it would sound much better if you reduce the delay on that one or add a more reverb or whatever. So this is what we have now. Make sense of it all and quickly forget. So you got that little distortion created by the compression and you got that magic switch just creating that little bit. In fact, we don't even need that much. A little bit less on the mix of that. And that's sort of making it sit nicely in the mix here, in my opinion. It's time to think of all the people who need help. New college 
truth. I call it opinion. There you go. So that's what we have there so far for our lead vocal uh, on this particular track. So we then, uh, we recorded last week, we recorded some uh, some double vocal for the chorus just to give a, a little bit of a lift here. So here's our original vocal. We've got this vocal double in here. So what this is doing is... Don't worry at all, it's just an illusion. Don't trouble yourself, it's just an illusion. So it's a quieter version of the track. It's got a little bit less processing on it. Uh, and the one thing we could probably do, you can kind of cheat here and put your uh, enhanced tuning on. When it's a double vocal, you can add a little bit of pitch control if you want to. So let's just put the pitch control on here and just see what it sounds like. Don't trouble yourself. It's just an illusion. And that can sometimes just create, like, bring... Because the, the cool thing about a vocal double is it can kind of help you tune up your vocal a little bit because two two notes the same that are both slightly off kind of combine to make it sound like the right note it's a bit of a weird phenomenon in music i'm sure there's a theoretical reason why it does that but don't worry at all it's just an illusion so i wouldn't use a heap of processing definitely not um enhanced tuning on my lead vocal because it sounds weird but when you're doing it there it works we've also got our chorus uh, our harmony on our chorus here which is doing uh, the the third up higher notes like this don't worry at all, it's just an illusion. And what I might want to do is give this harmony a little bit of width if I haven't already. No, I haven't already. So let's turn on the, we'll turn on the enhanced tuning. No, we won't do that for this one. We'll leave that off. In fact, we need that plug-in slot because what I want to do is I want to add some wider. So wider, if you don't know, I've talked about it before, but wider is a plugin that gives some stereo width. So if we just listen to this backing harmony vocal here, don't worry at all, it's just an illusion. And it's kind of a cheat where you, if you don't want to have a second one, so I could basically re-record this, pan one left, pan one right, and I'd get the same result. Or you can use wider and actually spread this out a little bit. Don't worry at all, it's just an illusion. So I'd probably put this around about the 40%. Don't trouble yourself. It's just an illusion. You don't want everything to be super wide, but you want to give it a little bit more stereo width. So if we bring these together now, that we've made those few tweaks on the vocal, we get something like this. And don't worry at all. It's just an illusion. And the timing there is not perfect, but I actually don't mind that. I think in a rock song like this, you don't need to worry about perfect timing. The other thing I'm going to do is just do a tops and tails on these because we need to work out where it needs to start and finish so we don't just have Pete breathing in the background for no reason. Oh. Okay, so it can definitely stop from there. Boop, we'll drop it there. We'll drop it there. All right, so there is our vocals. <laughs> Got folks talking about drunk. Don't ever mix. Yeah, mixing vocals, mixing alcohol with vocals can be bad. Uh, just, just ask um, uh, any any performer who's gone on after having too many drinks, where you, you know you're slurring your words and not hitting the right notes. Well, it can be rough. I did it on my 18th birthday party. I was playing. Um, um, I was having my 18th birthday party at my parents' house, which my house at the time where I lived. And um, my drummer and my bass player were like, "Oh, we should totally jam. It's your birthday, man!" And my drummer lived like up the hill, like literally like a 30 minute drive away. He's like, "I'm gonna drive and get my drums." He was probably drunk, if not a bit stoned at the time. Uh, so he went, got his drums, came back down. We set up a whole drum kit, set up bass, bass amp, guitar. And by that stage, it was about uh, 10 o'clock at night, 10.30. Um, and we'd been sort of drinking, partying for my 18th birthday since seven o'clock. And uh, we sounded just awful. It was thankfully the time before you know, everyone had a camera on their phone. So no social media and no record of this ever happening. So uh, I, could, uh, I could just say it never happened, but oh gee, it really did happen. All right, let's take a listen to uh, this next section. But don't worry at all, it's just an illusion. Don't. And look, if I was super pedantic, I could actually come in here and either use a noise gate to, uh, to gate out the sound of me breathing there, or I could um, just basically cut out that whole section. I tend to not bother. I don't know if it's just because I'm super, super lazy. Or whether it's just that uh, I like the sound of it. I'm gonna I'm gonna pretend that I say I like the sound of it. But when you bring it in the mix, you really don't hear it unless you unless you've got really noisy vocals or you've got a lot of background noise. It's really not a problem because if you listen to it in the bit here where the guitars are playing. Just an illusion. Don't trouble yourself. It's just an illusion. Stay close to home and fall out the window. 
Now, when I'm listening to this, I'm like, am I am I mixing these vocals too low? Because I, I because I have a natural tendency to mix vocals too loudly, then uh, I, I usually now go err on the side of caution and mix them lower. So do let me know. Again, I'll, I will play the full mix at the end, and uh, you can leave your opinions in the comments or in the chat if you're here live. Now let's uh, let's come in here and focus on this end section. So this was a giant mess last time, but if we uh, if we solo all these up, what we've got is we've got a whole bunch of harmonies and we've got ad libs in here as well. In fact, we'll do it. We'll go one by one here, and we'll take a listen. So this is what we have with our with our end here. Again, we can just we can tidy this up a bit to make sure it doesn't come in and start before it needs to, like so, and take a listen. Oh. So that's our end harmony. We've got these panned to the left and the right, like that and like that. And again, don't hesitate to cheat and put your enhanced tuning on your backing vocals. I know I'm sharing the secret sauce here today, but just, just a little bit of pitch control on your backing vocals can definitely uh, help out and uh, can, can make them just sit nicely because no one's, no one's really able to listen to the backing vocals isolated and no one's going to. So that unnatural sound you get that you wouldn't put on your lead vocal, you can definitely put it on your, uh, your backing vocal here. Oh, uh, Tremor Bear says, uh, man, your vocals are so good. Well, thank you, because uh, I, I appreciate it. Always, you're always concerned when you're, when you're recording vocals for someone else. When it's for me, it's like, well, it's me, then uh, it's too bad. You know what? I have to put up with it. But when it's for someone else, yeah. Uh, hey, Ron War, by the way. Hello, Frigsy. Uh, hello, anyone else who I've missed in the chat. Oh. Just tightens them up a little bit, yeah? And when you bring them in here with the original harmony... And a little bit more volume on those. That's about right. So we've got those. And then last week we started with these little ad libs at the end, which I thought worked really well. So I've recorded them here and I've just doubled them up. Uh, so if we come in here, we will drop this off here uh, and bring this in. This uh, is our little just, just, just an illusion. Just, just, just an illusion. And again, we can just give a just, little, just, just little enhanced chaining boost. You have this here in Garage Band. Why not use it just a little bit? Just, 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 just on your backing illusion. backles. You could argue they don't need it. Just, just. But just sometimes it just helps. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I love the end of this song. It is so fun. Um, uh, Ron Ward, do you have a show coming up after this one? Um, I think it's Homegrown Indie Live today, is it? Uh, please let us know in the chat and please uh, drop a link. That would be cool because I know uh, Ron brings the goodness with some cool indie tunes multiple times a week. I, I struggle to keep up with everything that Ron does at the moment. Uh, so let's bring this vocal passage and we'll just see if we've got a nice collection of balanced vocals here for this last section. This is where, you know what, having a vocal, uh, like having being able to put all your vocals together and, and bust them onto one bus that you can then control separately would be kind of cool. We don't have it in GarageBand, so we have to kind of do it separately. So uh, let's uh, play this end section. Maybe we can give this to Ron Ward and he can play it on Indie Music Live. <laughs> <laughs> Premier it if we get a if we get a final mix done here today. All right, let's take a listen. Doing better things, but don't worry at all. It's just an illusion. Don't trouble yourself. It's just an illusion. I like that magic switch. Stay close to home and bought up your windows and your doors. It's just, it's locking in a bit better than just it was before. Just say to yourself, it's just an illusion. Just an illusion. All right, so what's poking out here is this this high harmony has to come down a little bit. You'll find that that if you're doing harmony, you won't your lower harmonies will be ge like generally quieter. So I'll just play it and I'll turn it up and then I'll bring it back down and you'll hear what that is. Just 
<laughs> I love the <laughs> at the end there. It is so cool. Uh, and, and that was by the, by the way, that was inspired by like Bear's original ending actually did sort of sound similar to that. I'm just sort of accentuating the 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 stuff at the end there. Like that was how the original ending was going to be anyway. And I just thought, I want to use this sort of tape stop effect here just to make it sound extra cool. <laughs> Makes me laugh every time. Uh, now, all I'm hearing is the the main O, O, O kind of needs to be a bit louder because all these backing vocals are a bit soft. So I'm just hearing that, I reckon it's this one that does the main O. Oh. So what I might even do is just to give this, this won't double it or anything, but I'm going to bring this and put this on the, the lead vocal track. In fact, I think I'd started doing this. Yeah, this is what I was going to do before, is make a copy of this and just put it on the lead vocal track, but turn the volume down just so it's got that lead vocal processing on here, just to thicken up the end part here. So if we just paste that in there, it's just replicating that. Uh, and if we now play it... up. Oh. So it's going to, that way we can just sort of use this as a thickening knob which was also my nickname in high school all right uh cool so that's our vocal lead thickening device there so we'll play around with that as we listen to the end of this track but what we're going to do now what well, we've got 10 minutes left so i'm going to play the track from the start i'm going to listen uh and yes clayton von Kluge, of course you can well i say you can cover it but um it's, it's, it's bear that needs to uh, allow you to cover it, <laughs> to be honest. <coughs> uh, so let's, um, let's play this from the start and just take a listen. Listen to the mix. I'm going to be twiddling, twiddling some knobs as we go through if I hear things that we need. Uh, but take a listen and let me know what you think this needs. Uh, does something need to come up, come down, uh, move around in the stereo space? And not just vocals, but the rest of the track, because I reckon we're um, kind of, well, I, think, I think we're getting there. I think we're moving towards uh, finishing the mix on this track. Let's take a listen now. Let's drink ourselves to all the confusion But make sense of it all and quickly forget It's time to think of all the people who need help You call it truth, I call it opinion So worried about wrong, forget about right The people who just need our hands Don't worry at all It's just an illusion Harmony up Don't trouble yourself It's just an illusion Stay close to home And board up your windows and your doors Just say to yourself It's just an illusion Without really seeing And all the things you don't want to see Open up your mind and then your heart will follow through You call it hate, I call it addiction You bury the truth while I shine the light and all this time we could be doing better things But don't worry at all, it's just an illusion Don't trouble yourself Can I just say, there's a really cool part in the guitar here Listen to this, like this is those little subtleties that just come out I don't even know if it was deliberate or a happy accident But just take a listen to, uh, to this guitar part and how cool it sounds <laughs> You hear that pick scrape there over the top of it? Like got the harmonics going on, you got the pick scrape there. It just brings it brings this final chorus up a whole notch to the next level, uh, which I think is very, very cool. But don't worry at all, it's just an illusion. Don't trouble yourself, it's just an illusion. Stay close to home and put up the windows and your doors. 
just an illusion. <laughs> Every single time. All right, I'm going to save this mix. So we're going to hit the save button in the top left corner. Save it out there. And that's a pretty solid mix. So we're now going to duplicate. In case Pete ruins everything, we're going to make this version 6. And we're going to come back in. And we'll see. Because there was some... Um, there were some some comments that we had here, so we're going to take this. Uh, so Ron says, I always think harmony should come up in the mix. It's an affliction. Yeah, and I think I did turn the harmony up a little bit there, so uh, I reckon that's sitting about right now. We'll, we'll, we'll get there with that one. Um, uh, Frigsy says, I don't know. I think it might bring all the vocals up a little. I think I'd like to hear the main vocal just a little bit more out front. Yeah, I, I, I'm finding that the main vocal is just a little bit buried. So we'll have a quick play with that. We'll uh, we'll check the maybe the compression threshold uh, and maybe just drive the threshold down a bit too. Uh, it's already pretty like, I just don't want it to be so overpowering. That's the thing. The guitars and the drums are so good and the bass. I just don't want to do it. Um, so yeah, uh, the pick thing was just cause. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, bring bring the bass up a bit. Yeah, maybe the bass, uh, the bass was up and I've dropped it down a little bit so maybe we'll experiment with uh, bringing some bass up there uh let's see any other suggestions uh jerry gomes agrees in fact what i'll do i'll look at the compression on the bass in fact let's do that now before i forget let's just jump in here because we can do all this live that's the beauty of doing things live if we grab the bass here because it's a virtual bass but don't forget you can still add compression and things to virtual instruments so here's the bass as it sounds it might yeah it's just got the default compressor on here so let's just give it a little bit more ratio. That's kind of giving it a bit more of a boost, isn't it? Bring it back in. Don't worry about wrong, forget about right. And all this time there's people who just need our hands Don't worry at all It's just an illusion yeah, I reckon that's coming through a little bit more. Uh, now, Frigsy, who said uh, that we want a little bit more main vocal. Yeah, I agree. We just need to uh, make this sort of cut through the mix a little bit more, don't we? <laughs> Breathe. Don't trouble yourself. It's just an illusion. Stay close to home and board up your windows and your doors. Just say to yourself, it's just an illusion. Without really seeing Maybe it's actually got a little bit too much reverb on there as well. Let's just drop that reverb back a little bit and maybe just go more, more with the delay. And all the things you don't want to see That's better. Open up your mind and then your heart will follow soon. Is that a bit too loud now? Uh, do we need to just sort of balance that down a little bit? Let me know if you're thinking. Uh, bringing the hi-hat up will give it more energy. You know, I've got to find... Because the, the drums are must have been... Uh, which one actually has the hi-hat? Is it this kit here? No, that's doing another one of those. Might be Gavin here. Illusion. Yeah, it's probably going to be hard to find that because of the, the, the drums being sort of segmented here. Unless it's this one that has high hat well, That's the kick drum with the crash. Oh, Rangers versus Jets. <laughs> that's right. Rangers are playing up in Winnipeg tonight. All right. I got the rest of my day sorted. Uh, actually, I've got to go vote. <laughs> different uh bass sounds good in the zone yeah cool the breathing is cool see i like breathing i like left in breathing i'm, I'm a bit of a fan of it so uh yeah we'll uh, 
We'll see. Uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, we'll, it's close, yeah? We'll, we'll probably need to do at least one more video, probably later in the week on Thursday or Friday uh, or Wednesday, about um, the final mixing. So final mix process where we go through each and do some more tweaking on all the other instruments. Um, but yeah, I think we're pretty close. So let's export a version, shall we? And uh, maybe uh, if, if Ron's got a show today, maybe we can, uh, pro no, we, we probably need to finish it before we debut it, don't we? But uh, yeah. Let me know, Trevor Bear. If you let me know if you want me to just send this to Ron, I'll just like throw a Wizabel visualization on it or something. Um, so if we just share this over to our as a song file, as an uncompressed wave file, over to Audio Share, which is do I not have it? Oh, let's do Open In. Open it in, and then we'll do Audio Share, and then we'll just have a quick look ski at it uh, as a as a wave. See what it looks like, because yeah, you don't you don't want to. Um, you don't want to do... Yeah, thanks, Ron. I'm like, oh, yeah, shall I, shall I make Ron do this or shall I make Ron not do that? And it's like, oh, I'll make a version and I'll send it to Ron if he wants to. Uh, if he wants to. There you go. Trevor Bear says do it. Uh, so, Ron, I'll send you a version um, shortly uh, if you do want to. It's definitely Ron ready. There you go. You got the tick of Ron approval. If it's sounding okay, we'll, we'll put the uh, proviso that it's a, uh, it's a final mix. But I think it's, it's cool and, and uh, yeah, I think folks will dig it. So, uh, we'll, uh, we'll get it out there. We'll get it out there. All right, we're just waiting for this one to export, and then we are done. Are you starting now, Ron, or is it in like an hour's time? I think you start in one hour, don't you, um, with uh, your show. While we wait for that to export, let's jump over and find it. Why not Why not just find it? Why talk about it? Oops, I typed, instead of Ron Ward Indie Live, I typed Ron Ready. <laughs> Uh, here it is, one way, 11.30, yeah, so it's in one hour's time. So uh, you're going to set your reminders. We'll open this in audio share. So set your reminders, folks. What I'll do is I'll throw this in the chat here now. So it is the uh, the Rock and Ron recording community live stream, live, blah, 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 blah. It's got lots of names now. I like it. So I'm just going to copy this and throw it here into the chat for you. Boom. There you go. You can check that out. All right. Yes, Ron is the boss. It's Ron's world. We're all just living in it. All right. Let's uh, let's take a listen to this here in Audio Share. We'll uh, we'll do we'll do a little trim on it. So we'll do the trim and fade that we need to do, like so and like so. I love it because it just ends. You don't have to worry about the tail of reverb because there is no tail. It's awesome. All right. Uh, hit the save button on that one. Let's trim it. All right. Here you go. Uh, we're going to go out uh, with this one. This is uh, the. The not final mix, but the close to final mix of uh, of an illusion, Tremor Bear featuring this dude. Uh, let's take a listen. Let's drink a toast to all the confusion. Make sense of it all and quickly forget. It's time to think of all the people who need help You call it truth, I call it opinion So worry about wrong, forget about right And all this time there's people who just need our hands Don't worry at all, it's just an illusion yeah, I think it's I think it's in the ballpark. I don't mind Peter's idea of clip gaining up the uh, the opening riffs there. If that was if that's what you're meaning, I think that could be a cool thing to do. I think I've probably got a little bit to do on this, but um, yeah, maybe the. Uh And I think the bass is just a little overpowered now. I think I kind of went a bit too nuts on the compression of that. So we're just gonna we're just gonna pair that back a wee bit because uh, the bass is a bit too overpowering now. But I'll I'll twiddle with them as we go. But yeah, let's just see if we can um, if we come in here. I think I already did. No, I haven't gained them up. Yeah, I reckon you're right. I reckon just five dB on each of these intro guitars. I think is gonna do a nice thing. It's just gonna give it a little bit more, uh, a little bit more juice. Ready? Yeah. Let's drink a toast to all the confusion. Make sense of it all and quickly forget. Yep, that's in the ballpark. So what we'll do from here is we'll we'll, we'll grab the uh, the the little trick that we do here with this one to just drop it down a little bit more. We'll export it to give us some more headroom. I'll throw it over into Final Touch. We'll give it a quick little uh, quick little dirty master, and then uh, yeah, we'll put it on a visualizer, and I'll. Uh, 
yeah, well, I'll send it over to Ron. Ron, feel free. No obligation, my friend, but feel free to play it. And, um, yeah, we'll, uh, I'll, I'll finalise uh, the, the mastering process and, uh, and yeah, we'll, we'll finish this off probably in the next week. So there you go. Our March song is going to be finished by, like, the 10th of March and our February song hasn't been finished and it's going to be the end of March. So that's just the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. Alrighty. Uh, yes, we will indeed do that. All right. Thanks to everybody for, uh, for hanging out here. I uh, appreciate you being here. Uh, I know these are sort of slightly different streams, but hopefully you enjoyed the kind of hybrid show where we talk a bit about the news and the notes and the tips and things, and then we dive in and do a project. Hopefully you get to sort of hear the hear the theory and hear the behind-the-scenes stuff and get a catch-up on the GarageBand news, and then you actually get to dive in with me and work on a project. I think it's a fun way to make this show a little bit more interesting. So, uh, And thank you again to Tremor Bear for, uh, for giving me the opportunity to play around with this one. Thanks, everyone, for being here. Don't forget, if you do want to uh, jump on over to studiolivetoday.com slash garageband, you can go over there and check out all of the stuff that we have on offer there, the FAQ and uh, the course there that you can pick up for just $10. do dues. All right, thanks, everyone, for being here. And uh, as we say at the end of every show, please be kind to yourself, be kind to others, keep creating, and I'll see you real soon on the show known as... Garage Band Weekly. Bye for now. Garage Band, Garage Band Weekly, Garage Band, Garage Band Weekly, Garage Band, Garage Band Weekly. Whoa, see y'all later. Need an answer to your question.